Welcome everyone and welcome to a new episode of Welcome Home in Nexa FM. We are now live in Twitch in nexafm.com and in the 88.2. And today we are getting creative because the, our guest today is a WordPress developer and a, a web designer. He is Paul Jones and he is from Bristol and he lives in Altea. And welcome to Welcome Home, Paul. Thank you. Thank you for having me. <laughs> How are you feeling? How are you today? Yeah, very really good. Yeah, it's very uh, beautiful weather outside, <laughs> and uh, it's um, it's, be, it's been a really great day so far. So, yeah. Have you experienced the Spanish summer so far, or not yet? Yes. Yeah, it's <laughs> very very hot. Yeah, very hot. <laughs> and I can tell that we are already like in hot summer, right? Last week I think we were in autumn, raining all the time, <laughs> and today, what happened today? So yeah. Okay, okay. So as I said, uh, Paul comes from Bristol, correct? Brist yep, uh, Bristol, UK. Yep. In the southern part of UK, right? Yeah, in, in the southwest. Okay, southwest. And now he's living in Altea. Um, he is also the, the creator or the brand identity of the yoga project Spy Taronja in Altea. Um, we will ask him more questions about it. How did it, did it happen and, and why did you create this project? But before that, um, since when are you living in Altea and, and how or why Altea? What happened? Yeah, so it all started um, about four years ago when I met my uh, girlfriend, uh, Patricia. Okay. And uh, she's Spanish, she's from um, Coyera, which is uh, a bit further north from, from out here. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, we met in Bristol, in, in back, back in the UK originally. Okay. okay. Uh, four years ago. And I, we made the decision, me and Patricia, we made the decision to move to Spain, uh, you know, just, just as COVID was starting, we started to have the idea mm -hmm. and um, we we talked about like uh, you know whether whether it is worth staying in the UK mm -hmm. and uh, what we what we what the reasons why we'd like to move to back to Spain and uh, yeah we made the, the decision and the, the the jump to come here you know wow okay. about uh, a year and a half ago a so so I've been in Spain now for a year and a half okay yeah. so you are more or less technically like new in in spain so far well one year and a half if it still feels new <laughs> exactly yeah. exactly but and, and was it altea from the very beginning or did you think about other places in la marina baixa in the costa blanca or did you want it from the from the start to come to altea i think we did want it from the start but after some research so mm -hmm. we did we did look at some places uh patricia's parents are from uh Coyera, as, uh, as i mentioned before mm -hmm. and uh, we thought about, uh, you know, moving there first, and we thought about um, some other places like Alicante, uh, Valencia. Mm -hmm. um, but we decided that we, we wanted to be in a smaller um, uh, city or town, um, and we wanted to be more in the countryside. Okay. We didn't want to be in the city anymore, because where, where, where I'm from, Bristol, is a, is, is a fairly big city. It's about half a million people. Oh, wow. Okay. And yeah, we wanted to just move somewhere a bit, bit mm. quieter and also closer to Patricia's parents. Yeah. Correct, because Cullera from Altea, it's like one hour maybe? Yes, yeah, one hour. It's okay. a short drive. Yeah. So it's the perfect distance. I would say you're close to the family, but like no door to door. Like, <laughs> yeah. perfect. Okay, so um, and now then let's go to the immersion right to how is it to the the, the, inte the integration part at the very beginning was it complicated or do you have some funny stories that you that is worth telling us about spanish learning or talking to spaniards in english is it how is it yeah, yeah and, and <laughs> initially it was it was very challenging um, oh, there's just like an, there's an endless list of, of tasks you have Interesting. to. Interesting. Yeah, you have to okay. you have to do to um, you know uh, get settled here. Mm. Um, you know, there's uh, the as, so, as soon as you get here, you need we, we, you know we we had to find somewhere to live as soon mm -hmm. as possible. And then the next next uh, step was to register, you know, for the padron, and, uh, and then try and get the, the residency, the near and then the residency. Correct, well. correct. Uh, and, and that came with a lot of obstacles and challenges. We had to find, it was very difficult to find out information. Uh, we went to 
quite a few places, like e even as far as a police station in in Benidorm, for example. Oh, okay. And then uh, we got kind of like uh, turned away from places uh, in Alzira, and uh, also it's really interesting how um, you you buy the uh, the appointments right from the the police. That was quite interesting. Okay, so how it, how does it work? Because yeah, I, I haven't done that process so far. Well so tell us a little bit about that. You go, you go to um, book an appointment uh -huh, online. Correct. But they're they're kind of all taken taken up. So you have to uh, you have to buy one essentially. And, and um, uh, I think uh, the first the first time around that didn't go very well. The the, the police the policeman just kind of like said uh, you're in the wrong place or something, and we have to go somewhere else. And mm -hmm. it's all very confusing and cha and chaotic. And I don't <laughs> I don't speak Spanish, <laughs> which, which is another problem. Yeah. Uh, so Patricia helped a lot, obviously. Yeah, at um, least yeah. Luckily, she she was with you because I might assume yeah, I can imagine that bureaucracy is a and paperwork is a little bit like running in circles sometimes. It like feels <laughs> like it. Yeah. It's like <laughs> okay. Sorry. It's if, yeah. It's like that. Even for us, eh? I must I I must admit it. Yeah. We we need to do some. Uh, paper related stuff and then you don't really know where to go to and which is the first step and yeah, yeah, yeah. I definitely understand you and uh, the best way that we dealt with it was just kind of treat like a sort of game uh, you know because there's always something that they throw out you throw out you after you've done something you know, that you need to do there's always something next that correct they throw it's, at you, it's you know. like a gincana or something like that. do you know the term i don't know if it says in english as well gincana but or like a treasure hunt that you have to go right <laughs> first yeah. step second one then open a gate then cross the labyrinth something like that exactly, okay yeah. okay so um let's move now to the um, to your current projects you are wordpress developer web designer yep. and uh, i've seen you've created the the brand identity for different brands different projects but let's talk about spy taronja which i think it's um closer to you also because of the personal side right okay yeah spy taronja is a yoga studio Mm -hmm. um, and it's, it's run by my girlfriend Patricia. Mm -hmm. uh, so we, she's she started it about several yeah several months into moving here, into moving to out here. Oh, so um, she started the project before moving to, or after? Sorry. Ah, okay. Yeah, okay, she, okay. she started it after. Mm -hmm. um, although, although like kind kind of we had we we, we were building the website um, back when we were in Bristol. Okay. So before we moved here. But th things really got uh, started to to uh, get moving with when we got when she set up her studio, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, which was uh, about yeah several months into moving. After moving, after so moving yeah, I assume moving. like the idea was already um, growing while you were in the UK, but yeah, then to materialize and make real the, yeah, the project. Yeah. Uh, for for example, the the logo we we had um, uh, completed and the all of the branding we had kind of designed and the, the website was kind of just started to be um, developed in Bristol and, okay. then, and then we kind of expanded on it as we we as the studio kind of grew mm -hmm. as well um, so I think for example we now she now has um, an online school mm -hmm. and that has kind of gradually been built over the last few months okay. um, so that's quite new for example that's, that's something quite new but in terms of the the brand identity and the website, uh, yeah, that that got started um, about a year and a half ago. Yeah, okay. before the studio. Okay, before okay, studio. okay. And uh, since you are like very related to yoga, uh, do you uh, are you also uh, an active yo yogi, as we say in Spanish? <laughs> do you do yoga every day, or you are not into yoga at all? I, I go, uh, I, I go once a week. Uh, okay, so to a so spite taronja, I yep, assume. <laughs> yeah, but I, I'm not heavily involved in, in yoga. Okay. So, okay. Um, yeah, it's, it's something that I, I got introduced to when I met Patricia, mm -hmm. and uh, I, I grew to learn more about it, and um, I now enjoy going to a class every week. Yeah. Okay, and how does it feel to uh, be teach or be trained by your partner? Is it, uh, and also to work together with your partner? Is it? Uh, um, something like uh, challenging or you know it's complicated to separate sometimes uh, the personal side the professional side 
No, not at all. I, I don't think so. We, I, me, and, me and Patricia, we work really well together. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, if we come across like any any problems with the website, uh, it's really easy to just talk through it and work out the problems and fix things. And you know, I, I really enjoy going to a, a weekly yoga mm -hmm. class, for example, and and learning how you know this asana or um, or this this posture or, or movement helps with this and that and so on. It's yeah, really interesting. And it's very beneficial, right? Like practicing yoga helps a lot to the body and to, to the mind. Exactly, yeah. It's, it's really good for the body, yeah. Okay. And also the mind, yeah, yeah. Okay, okay, okay. And uh, I mean, the yoga taron spy taroncha is very multicultural, I would say, because I, I went once and I've seen like the, the, te the students are from several nationalities, is it? Yeah, it, it helps that Patricia speaks Spanish, mm -hmm. uh, Valencian and English. Mm -hmm. um, so we, we do have uh, people come from uh, many different um, uh, places and origins. And uh, we, we're, we're always uh, focusing on, on the community as well. So it's very important that we, that we listen to the feedback that we get from the students, mm -hmm. the yoga students, and uh, we, we respond to that. So, you know, we kind of... Um, uh, we're kind of creating a space that people can enjoy essentially and, Correct. and, and enjoy Correct. yoga practice. It helps us that it's in Altea and in Altea I think it's a very variety of uh, countries of people <laughs> coming from several countries that live in Altea so it helps as well to have uh, this multicultural community coming to, to Espai Taronja, right? Definitely, yeah. Okay, okay. Okay, so what about um, the inspirations? Because as a creator, as a designer, um, when you n you have a new project to develop, to develop, you need to yeah to get some artistic job done. How do you gather your the, the inspiration? How do you create? Do you need like uh, well, um, yeah, with brand identity, it's very important to uh, think about uh, what the brand means. Mm -hmm. And for for example, uh, S by Taranja, mm -hmm. uh, we I looked at what the word Taranja means. You know, so it means orange, and that's where the Correct. the logo. That's the reason why the logo is an orange. That's very simple. Mm -hmm. um, other things are like uh, working in um, color schemes and um, typography. Um, so the, the fonts do you choose are very important because they have to reflect the the personality of the brand. Okay. Uh, we did we didn't want to uh, be super modern and kind of go with other trends within the yoga industry. Uh, so we went such with something as, uh, such as another exa one example that you could. Tell well, an, an example would be um, you know to to create a uh, an identity or personality which is quite sophisticated and, and modern. Um, I, we've kind of gone with using um, shapes and patterns that are a bit more kind of fun and mm -hmm. free. Mm -hmm. um, so we use because Altier is close to the uh, the coast, mm -hmm. and there there are a couple of there are a few pebble beaches. A lot of the shapes that we use on the website, for example, and in in the in the uh, the flyers and uh, business cards are uh, the shape of pebbles. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's that's an example of how you would use something from what the business means and incorporate it into the yeah. brand identity. Yeah. Okay, okay. So you, you link it to the reality and, and, exactly, and yeah. reflect it. Yeah. Okay. Nexa FM. Nexa. Okay, uh, another artistic question that I wanted to ask you, Paul, because I've seen that you're a painter as well. Like you paint, right? Yeah, a as, as a hobby. A, yeah. It's just a hobby, yes, but it's yeah. very artistic, very professional. That's what I've seen. Do you do it very often or you used to do it in Bristol and not anymore? Or Yeah, it's, it's something I, I, I enjoy and I used to do it more in Bristol. Um, uh, now, nowadays, uh, because I'm so heavily involved in, in many, uh, many other projects, mm -hmm. I don't paint so, so much, but I, I, I do enjoy painting. You know. Okay, is it something that relaxes you maybe, or like you help, helps yeah. you to meditate? Or Yeah, I, I think uh, like, a, like a lot of other, other um, hobbies, uh, it's, it's definitely something that's, that feels very meditative mm -hmm. and um, uh, it's very relaxing, you know. Um, yeah, I, I really enjoy it. Yeah, okay. it's my my style is um, uh, kind of 
I, I would say you would describe it as Im impressionistic. Okay. And very colourful as well. Mm -hmm. But um, I think the, the technical name for it is, is pointillism. Like basically, you're yeah, yeah it's like is it French style maybe or, or not like this? Yeah, it, it originates in in uh, France and mm -hmm. um, the the style you take the brush and, and you just kind kind of uh, create these points or or, or dabs mm -hmm. on mm -hmm. the on the canvas. And you build build them up, and it kind of creates an image and an optical illusion. Um, Correct. Yeah. Correct. Okay, so let's say that um, because now I want to go into this area in La Marina Baixa, like of discovery of recommendations. So let's say um, that you will gather again, or you st start again painting. Which place of this area would you like to paint? Like ah, which wow. corner yeah. or? Yeah. Have uh, you thought about it <laughs> or not yet? No, I've not thought about it. But if I think about it now, the um, the, the mountains mm -hmm. um, around, because when when you're in out here, you you look around inland, and there's just like there's mountains everywhere. Correct. Um, so the C Sierra de Bernier mm -hmm. uh, would be good, and Ifac in. Um, okay, El Peñón uh, de Ifac, yeah. mm -hmm. uh, which is nearby. Um, those would be nice paint, and also the, the in the centre, there's some really beautiful buildings in mm -hmm. the centre out here. Mm -hmm. um, that would be really nice paint as well, I think. Correct, yeah. like this church that I always keep on calling the cathedral, but it's not a cathedral, <laughs> but it looks like a cathedral, correct, correct. And apart from painting so far, what you've discovered and visited in this area, which which is your favorite spot or which one would you highly recommend us? Like, it's a must, you have to go. Which one would be? Oh, I, lo I love food, so I think the markets in Altair are really nice. The so market? Yeah, the fruit mm -hmm. and veg market and mm -hmm. um, also... The, the yeah, there's a really nice market in Albert as well, and Al Al Albert is um, uh, somewhere which is uh, kind of in between Benidorm and Altair, right? Mm -hmm. so Correct, uh, Albert. It's very yeah. nice as well. I would say, I would say, yeah, those places are my favorite places to go in Altair. Okay, yeah. okay. And what about the food? Are you a paella lover or not <laughs> really? Like you miss the the food back home, or do you like Spanish food? Well, I think that's, that's something that I found really interesting about um, living in Spain so far is mm -hmm. that I can I can cook and celebrate uh, both both cultures, right? So of course, you know, I, I I can still find the ingredients to make a Sunday roast, uh -huh. um, and I can have a go at making a paella or um, a arroz al horno. Or, or <laughs> or ha or have you like tried to, to cook fideuá of arroz al horno yourself? Yeah, really? yeah. I, I, it's wow. usually, it's usually. I think the paellas have been with people. Okay. So because mm -hmm. it's yeah. it's quite a, a difficult thing to to make, you know. Mm. So I've 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 usually made those with other people who are quite good at making it already. Um, but yeah, I've I've had a go at making some some Spanish uh, dishes. Yeah, and uh, some some I really like, uh, which uh, I a uh, previous job was a chef. Um, I was I was a chef in in the UK in Bristol. Oh, okay. Four or five years. And I think uh, they they did they had a, a dish there which was sort of a, um, a a breakfast dish, where it would be in a tomato-based sauce, and you would have um, some some onions and uh, uh, potatoes in there. And I, I like I like to kind of uh, make that and put it put a few um, Spanish ingredients in. Now, mm -hmm. now that I'm here, so I can I can put things like chorizo in that <laughs> and uh, paprika, okay. which is which is a really amazing flavor you have in, in Spain. So. Um, uh, yeah, I, I really enjoy making that dish as well. That's like a kind of. So uh, you make like a new version of the of the dish and mix both flavors and. Yeah, it's another way to be creative, right? <laughs> <So>. <laughs> yeah, that's great. You know, yeah. to to mix and to be creative uh, everywhere in the in the kitchen, uh, when designing, when you know. It, I think it's a style of life, like maybe no this creation. Yes, yeah, <laughs> and uh, another great thing about Altier is it's uh, it's a very creative place. Mm -hmm. There's there's a lot of really nice um, boutique shops you can visit. Um, there's a lot of artwork there. There's mm -hmm. a lot of art galleries, um, so you can visit Altier to to explore that. And yeah, I think it's just a really beautiful city as well. So for artists, it's uh, somewhere they can admire. The the you know the beauty of out, out here yeah, correct sure. correct is very and I think uh, well it's the um, a part of the University of uh, Elche I think if I'm not wrong ah, I didn't it's know that. It, well oh. na, then now you know how you can have a look I think uh, part of the university is in Altea the 
uh, we call it Bellas Artes, which would be art. The art part of the right. university is in Altea. So mm. there's a lot of art, art students. It correct, okay. correct. That's why, that's why. Let's say, yeah, like Altea is like the artistic uh, hub in yes. the Marina Baixa in Alicante. Oh, amazing. <laughs> okay. And, um, okay, this is going to be tricky, or but after one year and a half, what about the languages? Uh, have you, like, do you practice very often Spanish or ca Valencian? Do you speak Valencian with your family-in-law, or do you dare at least to, <laughs> do you understand Valencian? No, no not yet. <laughs> uh, not it's yet, it's that's a good answer. I feel, I feel embarrassed uh, a little oh. bit, but it's, uh, yeah, it's, it's a, like, langu language is very difficult to, to learn right so um, I am taking Spanish classes mm -hmm. and I am uh, trying to speak as as many you know as much as possible in conversations mm -hmm. um, but I, I'm, I'm not confident with, with Spanish just yet so but uh, but with Valencian yeah uh, whenever we go back to see Patricia's family mm -hmm. uh, it's always really inter uh, inter you know interesting to pick up the, the Valencian words like Molve is uh, very very good right which one please? Molve Molve. And, um, <laughs> this is very good, correct? Yeah, I think that's Molve. most common. Yeah, that's yeah, yeah. You Molve. hear that all the time. Yeah. yeah. Um, <laughs> but, but beyond that, not, not much, not yet. So. <laughs> but that's a good one that you say not yet. It's not like not at all and not for, not for sure, but not yet. Uh, you, it might be in the near future, right? Yeah, in your projects, near future to learn. Uh, uh, yeah, <laughs> I, I would, I'd love to. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm, I practice every week, um, uh, try to practice as much as I can in the day. And I think, um, yeah, I'm really looking forward to being able to speak it, uh, you know, more, more fluently in, in conversation. Mm -hmm, yeah, mm -hmm. definitely. Great, good to know. Then also linked to the language is, uh, comes along the folklore and the traditions and the, uh, like, so far, for, inst for instance, have you celebrated, have you, have you gone to the fires in Valencia? So yeah, this year, did you the, go? the fires is amazing. Right? Okay, yeah. did you like it? That's, did you enjoy so it? Great. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and it's also really funny to to see people make mistakes sometimes with the uh, with lighting the fires, and then there's the explosions. Ah, uh, yeah, like so these uh, cohetes, right? Like petardos, this bomb bomb. Ah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, so yeah, yeah. <laughs> Do you like and them? And sometimes they add a little bit too much um, fuel to the to the fires and uh, it just uh, kind of explodes. Okay, and so uh, um, the question... The fireworks yeah. are really cool as well. Yeah. I, I think um, in, in Altea, no, in summer, there is uh, some fiestas as well that there are fireworks in summer. In close to Spai Taronja, there is this the island of Altea. Uh, there is the small island which is called La Olla. Yes. Yeah. Then I think there in summer there are fireworks that will be celebrated there. So ah. this summer, maybe last summer it didn't happen because of COVID. Possibly. So yeah. keep in mind and keep attention. Maybe this summer you will have close to your place uh, fireworks as well. Okay. Yeah. We'll so look out for that. Yeah, we'll look <laughs> exactly. Look, look, look out the window. <laughs> Pay attention <laughs> to it. Pay attention. So um, you know the fires. Do, would you? Do you know the equivalent of uh, the fires in Alicante? Well, it's not the equivalent, but it's kind of the big celebration in Alicante as well. I've not, I've not heard of it, no. Okay, then take notes because uh, you'll see the celebration. This is in June, it's in the 23rd, 24th of June, okay. and it's celebrated in Alicante. Uh, it's called the Hogueras de San Juan, which is the fires in, in Alicante. It's also a big tradition, a big festivity, so in case you want to plunge into folklore, <laughs> you, you can have a look at them. Okay, yeah, we'll, we will have to check that out. That sounds very good. Very good. Nexa FM. Nexa. Okay, um, um, sorry, were you going to... No, no, it's okay. You can have, so for, <laughs> for sure, no problem. You can... I know it's, it's been... Uh, we're talking a lot, so you can drink. Feel free to drink, don't worry. Um, so I was... Um, Let's do a quick reminder. Reminder: We're talking to Paul Jones. Uh, we can find you on Instagram as Paul Jones Designer, correct? Or can you remind us your Instagram profile, Paul? Yeah, it's uh, at Paul Jones Design. Okay, yeah. and also your website. Uh, PaulJonesDesign.com. Okay, so you can check the website, check the the, the projects he's developed, the designs he's created. So. Um, 
future projects that you can tell us or uh, things that you have in your to-do list regarding creations and designs that you can tell us? Yeah, um, for, for Yoga Taranja, uh, which is yogataranja.com. Um, <laughs> Correct. That's, that's also Yogataranja.com. Okay. Yeah, it's also a big part of what, uh, what, what I do during the week, right? So the, uh, a, a big project that we've got coming up soon is where we're going to be um, uh, kind of, w- yeah, we're going to be uh, launching um, an online school. Mm-hmm. So the Escuela Online. Mm-hmm. And um, that's, that's going to be something that we're going to be working on a lot over the next few months. I'm not sure when we're going to be launching it to the public just yet. Okay. Uh, that's, that's more for Patricia to talk about. Okay, but we'll um, ask her. Yeah, that's, that's certainly something that we're working on a lot at the moment. And um, yeah, j- just uh, dur- during the day, I'm, I'm enjoying um, uh, work working with my clients on projects that they have. So I, I work with a lot of clients and their websites and helping them to design pages mm-hmm. and de- develop um, you know their, their things yeah. okay okay and uh, so let us know whenever is well we will see on instagram on the instagram of spite Aronja whenever the online uh, class is available so i assume it's wor- it will be worldwide right so people living in the uk or li- throughout spain they can join to the classes Yes, yeah, okay. I, I not thought about it that way, but yeah, that <laughs> it would be open to the world. Yeah. Of course, of, because I mean, uh, I assume I, I Patricia was taking or giving yoga lessons in Bristol, right? She was a teacher in Bristol as well. Yeah, uh, the, the great thing about uh, that is I, th- I think they'll be in English and Spanish, yeah. Okay, so so for my students from the UK, maybe can join and, and take. Yeah, 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 definitely. Yeah. Okay, yeah, so also the website of Spaitaronja is spaitaronja.com, right? No, it's no. yoga yoga taronja. Ah, sorry, yogataroncha.com, and also the address if you want to specify. I see in Altea, but can you please share the address of Spaitaronja with us? So if any listeners want to join, come uh, come along to Spaitaronja and enroll the classes. Yeah, it's uh, fifteen cap negrets. Uh, out here, yeah. Okay, close to the uh, Hostal El Trovador. Exactly, right? yeah. Mm. And it's uh, with amazing views to the sea, so <laughs> it's perfect to yeah come along c- and uh, yeah to have a meditation and a, and a yoga lesson. Okay, um, so Paul, are you like very transcendental and philosophical man or not really? <laughs> I think so. Yeah, it, it's been a long time since I've read any philosophy, but um, but I think uh, yeah, I, I, I do like a bit of philosophy, yeah. <laughs> okay okay because I wanted to ask you uh, or like do you have like a morning routine that you have some mantras or some ideas that you tell to yourself in case to, to give you motivation or like in to be inspired or uh, I, w- I wouldn't say like mantra like okay um, I think uh, no like you mean like a quote or no like um a sort of yeah like yeah habit, i mean you know, i want to be to be honest I'm, i i wanted to to go into more detail if you have like a morning routine in which you do some practice of your cup of tea every day and then start the day or uh, are you a coffee lover or do you prefer the tea the day definitely starts with the coffee <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> you're coffee lover not tea lover yeah well i enjoy uh, tea as well there's r- there's a really nice um uh alternative coffee um, cool, which is chicory. Uh, I d- I d- have you tried uh, chicory coffee? No, no, no. It it's it's hasn't got any caffeine in it, so okay. you can't really call it um, coffee, but it does taste like it. So oh, that's great. It's got a similar flavor. Okay. And uh, yeah, I, I, I would have like um, that during the day. Okay. Um, and then maybe, yeah. I, I take that as, a, as an advice because I, I don't want to drink that much coffee, so... What's ah, the name again? Yeah, it's perfect. If you if you like the flavor of coffee and mm. you don't want to drink too much coffee or you're worried about your coffee, caffeine intake, uh, chicory coffee is, okay. is really good. Yeah. Okay, then. Okay, perfect. <laughs> <laughs> I will take that one. Okay, so uh, before leaving now, uh, I I will ask you for a quote to do the closing of the oh of wow. the interview. Okay. We are running yeah. out of time. Well, uh, well it went too it's fast. This brings us back to the uh, the philosophy, right? So yeah, I do yeah. I do like uh, the really deep quotes, right? So I think my favorite one, or the one that had the most impact on me, uh, is one by uh, the, the scientist Nikola Tesla. Okay. Um, and it's uh, he, he said that if you want to understand the universe, uh, think in terms of energy, f- uh, vibration, and frequency. Mm-hmm. And it's it's like pretty profound. Like it's the kind of you have to sit and think about and uh, 
and, and it kind of when I when I first read it or for, first learned about it, it kind of blew my mind a bit because you know um, he's a pretty incredible scientist and um, uh, he's done some really awesome things and it's just it's just it's just one of those things which really puts things into perspective and makes you makes you think uh, about how things work mm -hmm. and I as a uh, as an artist and designer who, who does a lot of technical things as part of my job um, I also really like to learn about how things work so it's, it was just like a really beautiful quote from him ab about the universe you know so that's that's my favorite quote in that's that gives helps you to put things into perspective as you <laughs> said which is the yeah, most important you stand very far back when you think about that quote yeah. okay big, big picture yeah with very very small so paul thank you very much for coming here today uh, i hope you enjoy this little time of radio in Nexa FM and hopefully uh, talk to you very very soon or see you in Spy Taronja. Okay, thank you for having me. It's been great. Thank you. <laughs> bye bye. See you. Ciao.